God bless you. We're so happy to have you with us on the Wednesday night edition of the Hour of Power. So great to have you here with us. Thank you. Those in the congregation, if you would stand with us, please, at this time. And those of you that are watching on Facebook and YouTube, I really believe that God wants me to say this. Get ready to be blessed. I really believe that God is going to meet you exactly where you are. And I know we're living in some really unprecedented times, but I got some good news. We serve an unprecedented God. The bigger the mountain, the bigger the God. I'm telling you, God is big. How many in church could raise your hand and say, God is a big God. He's bigger than anything you face. He's bigger than any mountain in your life. God is a big God. Let's give him a wave offering of praise. Those of you watching right now, just raise your hand up and praise the Lord with us. I don't know what kind of day you've had, but I believe it's going to get better from here. Lord, we praise you. We thank you now for all the times that you've rescued us. All the times, Lord, that you helped us, and we didn't even know it. So, Lord, we pray that tonight's hour of power will be an amazing one hour of deliverance and miracles in Jesus name we pray let's stretch our hands out to one another we're going to agree in prayer that whatever's needed God is going to move on your behalf sickness God is a healer worry he's a peace speaker you need supply he's a provider so father right now we stretch forth our hands in Jesus name and we agree together that this hour is going to be one of great blessings and miracles in the name of Jesus. Now, before I say amen, I want you to put your faith into action. I want you to get at your prayer request. Our prayer ministry team is over here to my right, to your left, and they're ready to get your prayer request right now. If you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, or you're in church, all you got to do if you're on Facebook, send message in the comment section. YouTube, the chat section. You might say, why do you want me to do it? I want to get it in my hand. If you'll do that over the next few minutes, I'll have those requests in my hand. And we're going to get everybody in the church sanctuary along with everybody watching, some, some in different parts of the world, some across America. BK, let's bring up our prayer request that we laid out on that table to encourage people. They're not the only one that needs a miracle from time to time. Look at all of those requests. And the reason I want to show you that as well is to build your faith and to let you know every one of those prayer requests are still here at Faith City. We throw no prayer request away. We continue to pray. We continue to believe. So get your request in right now for you, a loved one, someone else, and let's see what God will do. We're so happy to have back with us Angie Robbins, a powerful praise and worship leader, gospel artist. Put your hands together. Welcome her right now. And let's have a great time in the hour of power. Hallelujah. How many of you know we serve a great God that does great and mighty things? Hallelujah. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah right now. We serve a great God. Yeah. Here we go. Great God, great God. Great God, great God, oh. Somebody lift your hands and tell them we serve a great God. Uh, whoa. You're my 
lift your hands right now or look up to him and say, we want more. We want more of your spirit, more of your power, more of your anointing. We want more, God. Yeah. Somebody say, we want more. Come on, I can't tell them what you need. You tell them right now. Say, yes, sir. Pour it out on us, pour it out on us, we want more. Can we do it together? Somebody say it right here, say, we want more. More of your power, God. More of your healing, God, and we want more. Yes, we do, yes, we do, God. Somebody say, we want more. Oh, God, oh, God, yeah. Last time you say. We want more. Yeah. You know, there's a verse in the Bible, Sister Angie, that says, Blessed are those that are hungry and they thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. And I, I, I'm, I'm hungry for more of the Lord because the only way I can get through this crazy world we're living in right now is with Jesus. How many can say amen to that? I, I don't have all the answers. I can't figure everything out myself, but I know that there is a God in heaven who will empower you and empower me to get through every struggle. You know, while I was over there worshiping uh, with everyone else, I looked down and I saw my little, my little jar of mustard seeds. And in this little jar here are probably, oh, could be 500, 600 mustard seeds. And the Bible says that if you will have faith the size of a grain of a mustard seed now that's only a little bit of faith that's not a lot of faith but it says if you will have faith the size as a grain of a mustard seed you can't hardly see this you can say to the mountains in your life you can tell them to be removed you can tell them to be cast into the sea and the Bible said if you doubt not of your heart you will have whatever that you say and I feel mustard seed faith not only in the church but I feel mustard seed faith from those of you that are watching I I want everybody to say it come on say say I have a measure of faith and that's all that I need in the name of Jesus in a moment we're going to get ready to pray and we're gonna ask God to heal sick bodies you might say, well, the doctor has only given me, Pastor Hare, he has only given me about eight or nine months to live. Well, I thank God for your doctor. Matter of fact, I thank God for every drop doctor that's trying to heal people, that trying to give them medicine, trying to give them treatment, trying to take pain out of their life. And so I believe all healing comes from God. But when the doctor has gone as far as he can, we can call on a man who's called the great physician and his name is Jesus and that's what we're going to get ready to do now before we do that we want to see what prayer requests that we have thus far to pray over if you just joined us it's not too late to get in your prayer request if you're watching on Facebook send message or comment YouTube the chat section our prayer team will pick it up right off the screen and get it in my hand Brother Charles Harmon, the outreach director here at Faith City Family Church, is coming with whatever request we have to pray over thus far. And we believe that as we pray, God is going to give an answer. Praise the Lord. This is our prayer ministry box. Lord, we give you praise for it. And I'm going to, as I begin to read, I want your faith to begin to rise I'm, I'm gonna put this mustard seed just as a reminder you don't need a lot of faith to get a miracle all you need is a little bit of faith and God will get you through Jennifer Coleman pray for my vision she says Phyllis Hayes Dixon I'm giving thanks to the father for our many blessings just remember my family in prayer Patricia please pray for my family all six of them that not a one will get this COVID-19. How many thank God for that level of faith right there? What a blessing. Uh, I believe the name here is Jamara. I am believing for housing, drug, and alcohol treatment. 
I need prayer for protection. I have a dream, and that is that me and my daughter will unite one day. Somebody say amen for that dream. Jackie, please keep Doug Holvec in your prayers for he is fighting cancer. And I like how she closed her prayer request. She said, the devil is a liar. Can somebody say amen? Uh, this says, I think it's Patsy or Petey, either one, Pablo. Please pray for the Santana family. We're asking God to keep them safe and successful in this life. And it says, Lord, keep my mother safe. Pat Troy Brooks, my granddaughter's daycare closed for two weeks on Friday because two teachers tested positive for COVID-19. She and her parents are now quarantined. Please pray that they will test negative for the virus. Pat, we miss you. Tell the whole family we said hello. Oh, we love Sister Pat Troy Brooks and, and Shantae and Steve, every last one of your Father, right now, we pray that every test in this family will come back negative. Somebody say amen. That every test will come back negative for COVID-19 in the name of Jesus. Lord, you said, as your faith, so be it unto you. Reba, please pray for my sister who is a nurse that is taking care of a COVID patient and pray for the patient as well. Linda, please pray for my mom's safety and healing. She has fallen several times. Restoration and unity is needed for my family. Protection and health also for my daughter who is working overseas and abroad. Elaine, pray for this country that we come together as one no matter what color that you are. Somebody say amen to that. We pray against hate and division in the name of Jesus. And she said, I pray for my church family. And then a, uh, uh, Rokio, I would love to be a part of the Thanksgiving outreach that's coming up. I would love to go and help. Brother Harmon, let me hit. Come up and take this right now, brother. Come on and bring any other requests if you have them. But let's make sure Brother Rocco gets to help out at the Thanksgiving Day of the Cross, okay? Amen. That'll be great. Some more prayer requests. Denise, I have just applied for a job and would like blessings and prayer that I get this job and will be able to start on 11 16 20. how many thank god for her faith god give her a hand god we pray that it will happen on or before the 16th of thanksgiving in of, of thanksgiving of november which is the month of thanksgiving thank you sorry about that please pray for the man love family who lost their parents oh my i'm sorry in a tragic tractor trailer accident that's just terrible we'll remember that in prayer a host of requests especially for a wednesday night but this says uh, pray for my grandson and daughters in florida pray for me that my faith will get bigger than my fears lena prayer for healing for myself and my family peace and unity around the world oh god decrease she says the senseless senseless violence and for souls to be saved amen these are great requests alexander for my dream that i will find a place to live doreen for my children to be returned to me my goodness and to find a home and that they will give their hearts to jesus christ amen brother Harmon, would you come with the oil as i'm looking over these others here to make sure what the, this is a praise report yes this says from the brooks family thank you for praying for freddie he is doing good and has a new home well how about that now let's give god a shout brother freddie got his prayer answered thank you jesus and joshi says pray for my son noel who is working in new zealand and uh, we will do that wow my goodness he's a long way from home but god is everywhere pray for my fiance william that he gets full-time employment pray for my family to be safe during this pandemic 
You don't seem to be, Brother Harmon, a lot of concern about the pandemic. But how many know the blood of Jesus can cover you? I need some amens, not only in church, but those of you watching, give me an amen in your house right now. The blood of Jesus is greater than COVID-19. The blood that Jesus shed on the cross for our sins is more powerful, Sister Angie, more powerful than COVID-19 in the name of Jesus. I want us to stretch our hands out towards these requests right now. I'm going to keep my mustard seeds right on them. Let me put my mustard seed right on these just as a symbol that these folks got the mustard seed faith in the name of Jesus. And we're getting the oil out. And I want everybody uh, in the church service to stretch your hands out. And the ushers and Sister Angie sitting down there, just keep your hand out, honey. We're going to agree together in prayer. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, uh, we agree in prayer, oh God, for every single need that has come in during the Wednesday night hour of power. Now, Lord, I'm thinking of those that are sick with COVID-19. And, Lord, I hear a lot of other people pray for all kinds of other sicknesses. But I think we need to call out COVID-19. Jesus, if he can heal cancer, he can heal COVID-19. So, God, we are praying you will heal people from this dreaded disease, this plague in Jesus' mighty name. Sister Patricia Troy Brooks, once again, I decree and declare no one in your house will come back with a positive test because of that daycare shutdown in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for not only healing of the body, but healing, oh God, of families. Lord, there are families, Lord, that need salvation. They need unity. Oh God, they need peace. And Lord, we ask you to pour out your blessing on every family in the name of Jesus. Oh, give God a shout right now. I feel his power and his presence. Lord, we're praying for this family, Lord, that was in the tragic tractor trailer accident. Oh God, save their lives. Heal them, oh God. Restore them, oh God. Lord, we pray for Joshi's son, Noel. Lord, Noel in New Zealand. Maybe you're watching right now, Noel in New Zealand. There's no distance. There's no time in prayer. May the Lord touch you. Matter of fact, those of you watching in other parts of the world and around this country, we pray the power of God would come on you in the name of Jesus and touch you right now in Jesus name so Lord we praise you for answers to every request to every situation for jobs to come in for money to come in for opportunity to come in in Jesus name now I stretch my hands out to everybody in the church and those of you watching now and in your car listening and father right now I rebuke every disease every sickness every situation we take authority over the works of the devil right now. And we ask Jesus to lay his hands on you from the top of your head down to the sole of your feet. We pray that God would not only heal you, but heal your loved ones, your family members. Praise God. I feel a release of the power of God right now. Those of you watching, I pray the Lord will come in. There's somebody watching right now. You've been on the couch all day. You've been lethargic. Uh, you've had no energy. Uh, you've not been feeling well, but Jesus is healing you right now. Somebody watching, you've got an addiction. Uh, the Lord is delivering you from that. Uh, raise up your hand and receive it in faith right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, uh, God, we thank you for it, and we give you praise. Of all the miracles I've ever seen, the greatest one I've ever seen, is when somebody who is lost becomes found. Thank you, brother. Picked up those mustard seeds. I'm going to use them for the next service. And I want to know if, if uh, that same musher could go by my chair right over there on the floor and get me my crown of thorns. Thank you. I feel led to use my crown of thorns from the nation of Israel. Matter of fact, I have two sets of these. 
And brothers, you bring this to me right now. And I'll take it because this is an exact replica. These thorns can cut right through the flesh. This is a replica from the nation of Israel. This was a gift given to me years ago from a family at Faith City. They said, Pastor, you give an altar call every service. They said, we've been to many churches, but we've never seen where the church gives an altar call every service. Gives people a chance to get saved. God told us to give you a crown of thorns so you could remind people that Jesus paid it all. All to him I own. Sin had left a crimson stream, but the blood of Jesus washed those stains white as snow. Jesus paid it all. These crown of thorns were placed upon his head, and blood came down upon his cheeks. He did it for you, and he did it for me. Why would anybody turn away the gift of salvation when Jesus paid it all? Friend, if you need to give your life to Jesus, maybe you need to rededicate your life to Him. As I hold these crown of thorns in my hand, the same that were used on our Savior's head when they crucified Him, I want you to pray this prayer with me right now. You might say, well, you know, Pastor, I appreciate you doing this, but I'm a bad person. I've got bad habits. Matter of fact, I've done some evil things. Hold on a minute. This blood that Jesus shed covers every evil thing you've ever done. Every bad thing you ever did. All you got to do is call on Jesus. And he'll save you. He'll forgive you. He'll deliver you from your past. Can I call on the church that's present? I appreciate this fine group that is here inside the sanctuary for the hour of power. I want you to pray the prayer extra loud. Brother Chris might pick it up a little on the audience mic to encourage our viewing audience tonight to pray this prayer. Are you ready? Are you ready, team? Prayer team, everybody. Are you ready to lift your voice? Everybody say, Jesus. Even though I wasn't there, I believe it happened. You died on the cross. You took the crown of thorns upon your head, and you did it for me. Right now, I confess my sins. I am not perfect. I ask you to wash my sins away to come into my life and to save my soul right now Jesus I receive you as my Lord and Savior thank you Jesus that you saved me now amen how about a praise the Lord isn't that wonderful isn't that wonderful somebody in church somebody watching brother Brad if you come on back here and very carefully, brother, I, about six, seven months ago, one of these had cut me. I was taken back to my office. Be careful. God bless you. The crown of thorns that Jesus wore on his head, that you and I could be saved and set free. Those in the church, you may be seated. Once again, thank you for being able to attend. Somebody said, in the church, pastor? Oh, yes. We're just giving God praise that the church has been open now and uh, we're thankful for those that are able to come Sundays at 9 or 11 or Wednesdays at 7 but we understand that many of you are still needing to be a part of Faith City through the virtual worship experience either way we are all in it together matter of fact speaking of the word virtual can we do our virtual hug that only we do come on get, come, come on give me some love out here come on church I'm looking at you I need a hug from my brothers and my sisters come on now you know I can't I can't line you up and hug you up here I'd get in trouble for it but I can do this and those of you watching at home I love you we love you we miss you 
And I say one day, this too shall pass, and we'll all be together again in the name of Jesus. Well, even though these are unprecedented times, these are also great times of opportunity because people are looking for answers. Many people are afraid. They're scared. They don't know what to do. But here, the church has a chance to get beyond its walls. And how many know the church really needs to get out there now because a lot of people can't go inside the walls. There was a dear lady, Charlie, member of the Lady Sunday. We had that little event after the service and and she said, well, I'm from St. Paul, some church up in Philly. She was telling us about all the churches that are still closed. But you know, it doesn't matter whether you're in here or out there. Jesus is the same. And Faith City has not stopped. Not one week, not one month. Going outside these walls. And letting people know that Jesus cares. We're an outreach church, and, well, since 1995, whether through running the big school buses, of course, you're not going to see that for a while. Remember, we'd run those buses, a lot of them, we'd pack them all out, pack this place, and I'd get up, we'd remember Dana, we'd have the music, the basketballs, the, all that, man, my goodness. I say those days will return, but until they can return, we got to go out on the streets. Did you know that one of the biggest heroin capitals of the Northeast is a town by the name of Kensington? It's in the Philadelphia area. I want to be cautious what I say because I know many are watching and will view this at all different times. But God laid on our hearts to let Kensington know just because they have a place called, now listen to this name, needle, as in a needle in your arm. Needle Park. Just because they have people shooting up right on the street. Brother Harmon, you told me that one of our members was moved to tears when they went out with you and they saw a 15-year-old girl, 15, an addict, shooting up right in front of everybody. God told us, go out to those streets. Matter of fact, why don't you walk out there with us? I'm not going to take too much longer here because we've got a powerful word tonight. But I want you to go out to Kensington. This is a few days ago, not years ago, days. Brother Harmon, who was just praying with me and our outreach team for that particular week, were lining up in front of the outreach van, getting whatever goods that we may be able to have, dry goods, whatever we are able to get. As people are kind to us, we share that kindness with others. The PPE material, the water, so much dehydration in Kensington because of the addictions. Addicts fight dehydration. And then our team is getting their prayer requests. You know, I read some of them. I've got some of him right over here, I believe, in this stand right now, Brother Charlie, from Kensington. And our team prays with them. Some of them just shot up. Now that man, he's high. Somebody said, why would you show such a thing? We want to show you that Jesus said, go into the highways and the streets. Jesus loves that man just as much as he loves Brother Charlie Harmon or anybody else. And so somebody said, well, it must be rough out there. It's not hard to reach people. All you got to do is show up and be real. Show God's love. And all these precious people who we were able to give him a new pair of shoes. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And he's putting them on there right now. Somebody said, where, where are they? Where do you tell him that he, he, you got them from? We tell him the shoes are from Jesus. And so as Thanksgiving is approaching, there's so many homeless in Kensington. What we want to do is we want to be able to go out there on the same streets with the Thanksgiving boxes of love. Matter of fact, I'll kind of share that real quick with you. These big boxes 
And I, I love the theme that we put on them, boxes of love, sharing God's love and hope on the streets. Well, where's the church name? That's irrelevant. You won't need a name of a, of a church. What you need is God, Jesus. That's where the power is. That's who we need to be promoting. And we want to fill these boxes up with things that will help them as they're living on the street, dry goods, dry types of food, all kinds of different personal hygiene products and things. And just let them know that they're not alone on the Thanksgiving season. As a matter of fact, let me tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take it up higher. We're going to do what we call the Day of the Cross Thanksgiving Outreach in Kensington. We're going to take it up real high. Oh, can somebody say praise the Lord? So, Pastor, why did you show me all this? Is it, is it, is it time to give to the church outreach ministry? You're exactly right. Yes, it, that's why I showed it to you. Because I think a picture is worth a thousand words. And so we're asking during the Wednesday night hour of power, would you be generous and would you help us? Sunday, I humbled myself before everyone and I said, the church, as of recent, really needs some extra help. These COVID-19 times, I was on the phone with a businessman today and he was telling me about a, a business he's associated with the pandemic finally took its toll they're closing their doors after probably 20 years the church needs your help and if you could help us I would be grateful you might say well pastor how can I give my tithes and my offerings it's simple look at these options you can text to give Four five five twenty eight twenty. the secure link will take you right there, safe and secure cash app. Another way people use the dollar sign, Faith City FC2, all safe, secure, and quick. FaithCityNow.com, click the word donate. And we've worked hard to make it simple, fast, and safe and secure. If you'd like to send your tithes and offerings to the church, 179 Stanton Christiana Road, Newark, Delaware, 19702. 179 Stanton Christiana Road, 19702. Thanksgiving is upon us. And we're praying, aren't we, Brother Harmon? We're praying that on Wednesday night's hour of power, people will say, let me help. Let me give my best. Or I didn't get my tithe last Sunday. I was a little busy. I couldn't watch. I was went out of town or something. So let me let me give my tithes. Let me give some outreach offerings. I'm going to pray. God, thank you. This world is not our home. We're not going to live here forever. And what we do for God and what we do to help our fellow man will live on and on. God, we pray that people will say, let me. Let me see what I can do right now, Pastor. I'm going to do my best because the Bible said in Isaiah 58, 10, and 11, if you pour your soul or you share with the hungry and the afflicted, it says you will be like a watered garden. You, you bless somebody else, God's going to bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'll be back in just a moment. We'll scroll up these giving options. Options. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts for helping us, especially with Thanksgiving approaching. God bless you. Amen.
Once again, thank you, everybody. God bless you for being a part of the Wednesday evening hour of power. It is not too late to get in your prayer request. We'll be praying at the end of the hour of power. If you're watching us on Facebook, go to the send message or the comment section. If you're on YouTube viewing this, the chat section would be great. I want to give a shout out to our prayer ministry team that never misses a service. Can we put our hands together for them? They have logged a few thousand requests over the last eight months. It's amazing. And we thank you all for it. It's making a difference in the lives of others. Can we give a praise to the Lord for our music and worship ministry? Come on, every service, every service. And of course, to all the media staff, the audio, the video, Brother Chris, Brother Brian, Brother Al, or every come on, praise the Lord. We just thank God. It takes more than you realize to keep this going. And we just want to say thank you to all of you. And again, those viewing and those who came out tonight. You know, it means a lot to us when you share and you like our Facebook page. It not only encourages us, but it gets the content around. And other people are able to find out about outreach, about our work on the streets in Kensington. So if you would share and like our page on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram. We would be so very, very grateful. And I always like to remind people, especially during these pandemic times, that you can stay encouraged not only by watching us, but listening to great gospel music 24-7 on the Reach Gospel Radio Network. 20 FM stations throughout the whole northeast of the country. And for a station nearest you, you simply go to the ReachGospelRadio.com. You can also download the app, and you can listen anywhere, anytime to the best in gospel music. Our message is entitled, and I believe it's so timely. My goodness, you know, things just seem to be getting a little bit more interesting every day, don't they? That's all I'm going to say. Very interesting times that we're living in. And here is the message. Principles that produce a blessed life. Principles that produce a blessed life. Now, for some reason, I've lost my screens on the stage. So, BK, I'll be referencing the video monitor down on the floor. But the reason I put this message together is because we need to know that in spite of all this craziness going on, that we can live a blessed life. And I want you to say this after me. I want the devil to, to hear us all say it. Say, in the name of Jesus, no matter what's going on in the world, I'm going to live a blessed life. And so uh, I want to share with you in a few moments just a few power principles on how to live a blessed life regardless what is going on in the world around us. And I'm going to open up reading from the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2, and I'm going to read verses 42 through 47. And it says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and uh, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer, talking about the New Testament Christians. Next verse, everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. That's referring to unity. The next verse says, they, some of them sold their possessions and goods, and they gave, they shared with others who were in need. My, what a beautiful thing. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes, had fellowship, ate together with glad and sincere hearts. 
praising God and enjoying favor of all of the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. I want to pull out of these few verses five power principles that will hit on everything that they were doing that caused a challenging season to turn into a season of blessing. Because there are certain principles, regardless of whether there's a pandemic, regardless if there's strife everywhere, there are Bible principles that transcend every generation and every circumstance. And if we follow these principles, they will help us live a blessed life, beginning with principle number one. A blessed life is a life of praying. A blessed life is a life of praying. Now, I'm not saying that you're not praying. I'm not saying that I'm not praying. But I want to give you an encouraging word on making prayer a lifestyle. I think of one of the shortest verses in the Bible. It's, it's first of, the first one is Jesus wept. The second shortest verse in the Bible is 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. It says, pray without ceasing. But look at Acts chapter 4, verse 31. Note the words, after they prayed. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken were visited by the presence of God. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly after they prayed. How many believe that if we all can in unity pray that God will bring a spiritual awakening to our nation and to the world, how many believe that God has the capacity to take a season that's really been hard and at the end turn it into a time of great revival, a time of great increase? Come on, give me an amen. If you believe that, God has the ability to do it. But what we need to do is to adopt what they were adopting, and that is a lifestyle of prayer, always keeping a heart of connection and prayer with the Lord. Now, prayer, you know, according to the Scripture, can produce some amazing results. And I want to give you a verse that will encourage you and me to keep on praying, regardless of if we've been praying for a year or for months or for weeks, because accumulated prayer can get some amazing results. The verse I want to read is Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now, to him who is able to do immeasurably more, than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is with at work within us. In other words, not only when you pray does God listen, but God can not only answer the prayer you prayed, but he can do exceeding abundantly above what you asked. You ask God for transportation, he could end up giving you the car, and the garage to park it in. Do you hear what I'm saying? God is a God who exceeds expectations. How many could say amen to that God can exceed expectations? You pray for one, you got five. You prayed for seven, you got 20. Because God is a God of multiplication, a God of acceleration, and a God of increase. Principle number two in our message, principles that produce a blessed life, is a blessed life is a life that promotes unity. Oh, God in heaven, do we need efforts to promote unity? In Acts chapter 2, verse 44, it says, All the believers were together and had everything in common. In other words, they established common ground. That didn't mean they all dressed alike. That didn't mean they were all clones. It did not mean they sang the same notes at the same time. What it meant was they chose <clears throat> to be unified on common ground. And that common ground was they all believed in God. They all believed in Jesus. They all believed in, in, in the basic tenets of the faith. Now, friend, we might worship in different ways. We might look different. We might come from different places. Uh, but we've got common ground. Uh, and that common ground is the cross of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, that's why, you know what? Maybe we need to go out even more often with these crosses uh, and set them on corners 
hours uh, and tell people, let's, let's go down with hate and up with the love of God. Let's bring down hate on these streets. Let's bring down hate in these neighborhoods. And let's come around the cross. And let's pray for our neighborhoods and pray for our kids and pray for what's going on. Uh, and let's come on a common ground. Uh, we might have different ideas about this and about religion and about politics and about that. But one thing we can come together on, uh, there is only one cross uh, and one Jesus uh, and one blood uh, and one answer. It's time to put down the differences and come together around the commonalities uh, of our faith uh, and the message of the cross. Is there an amen from somebody? And people who promote unity will be blessed. Psalm 133 verse 1 says, How good and how pleasant it is. When brothers and sisters live together in unity. Our message, principles that produce a blessed life. Thirdly, a blessed life is a life of giving. Not only of monetary support to good causes, but giving of our time, giving of our ideas, our experience, taking the time to mentor someone else, taking the time to invest in someone else. I want to jump to Luke chapter 6, verse 38. I want to focus on this one verse because Jesus was trying to teach people about if you're a giver, there is no way you're going to hurt yourself because in the end, God's going to bless you. As he said, give, Jesus said, Luke 6 and 38, it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you again. There is no way you can outgive God. Whatever you give to God, God knows how to get it back to you. And I'll tell you this, when you give to God, he'll bless you in ways also that money can't even buy you. He'll not only bless you financially, but he'll bless you with things that money could never get you. How many know you can't buy peace of mind? You can't buy a good night's rest. Jesus wants to bless you, but he says if you want to open up the floodgates, you got to be willing to give of yourself. Principle number four of five, principles that produce a blessed life. A blessed life is a life that is spirit-filled. Now, that means every day saying, Lord, I want to be filled with your spirit. When you receive Christ, you receive the Holy Spirit. When you get saved, you got God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Bible said the three are one, the Trinity. So they all come into your life. Now, the Bible says about this in Ephesians 5.18, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery or debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Paul was preaching an illustration. He said, instead of going out getting high on wine, why don't you get filled up with the Spirit of God? How many know when you get filled with the Spirit of God, it changes how you think, changes how you feel, changes how you act, and it also empowers you to be able to do more for God. The Holy Spirit is the helper, the teacher, and the one who empowers. And then finally, as our musicians are coming, our principle number five, pr principles that produce a blessed life. Principle number five, a blessed life is a life of serving others. Some of the happiest people I ever met in my life we're working at a mission somewhere, feeding people from the streets. Happy, I'll never forget years ago, one Christmas, on Christmas Day, I made the choice, I'm going to such and such a mission, and I was there for four hours serving Christmas dinners. I'm going to tell you something, when I got in my car, it was in Wilmington, when I got in my car after serving all that food, I felt like a million bucks. Now, I still went home, had the Christmas dinner, did the whole nine on that. But I'm going to tell you, when I walked out of that mission, I felt really good. Because when you take time to serve somebody else, 
it's going to lift you up. Come on, how many know what I'm talking about? You can be depressed and then go volunteer and you feel better because you volunteered some of your time. The Bible says in Mark chapter 16, verse 20, then the disciples went out and preached everywhere and the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word by his signs that accompanied it. I focus on the words, went out and preached everywhere. If you really love Jesus, you'll love anybody and you'll love everybody. No matter what they look like, no matter if they're living in a tent in Tent City, doesn't matter if they're selling crack cocaine in Kensington, doesn't matter if they're shooting up heroin like that 15-year-old girl was, you'll get out there and say, Lord, what can I do for you today? Can I help somebody? Because if I can help somebody along life's way, my living will not be in vain. Friend, I, I want to get ready to close in prayer. I don't know if we have any other prayer requests. If we do, I know Brother Harmon will bring them. But I want everybody in the church sanctuary, if you would be so kind to stand up on your feet right now for our close and our benediction. Every prayer request that comes in, because our time has been tight, I'm going to hold on to these. We're going to pray over them, every one of them right now. But Brother Harmon, at our first service Sunday at 9, service, services 9 and 11 on Sunday, at our first service at 9 and 11, I will call them out again because we'll call out every request. Would you stretch your hands out, church? And those of you watching, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, whether it was James uh, or Jeanette, uh, uh, Father, or whether it was Sandra, uh, or whether it was Daria, uh, or whether it was JP, or whether it was Kimberly. God, we're holding up every one of these requests right now. God, that you would work on their behalf in the name of Jesus. And God, you would take what the devil meant for something bad and bring something good out of it somehow, some way. And Lord, we also pray that you would help us to live a blessed life, to live out these principles 